Welcome to Minding My Black Owned Business, Women in Business Podcast. I am your host, Kat English. This space was cultivated to celebrate and highlight successful, dope black women entrepreneurs in a community who represents the culture. Our guest today is a phenomenal business owner. Um, They are a duo team. Today we have Jillian Wilson of Smokey Joe's Barbecue. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Thank you for joining in in the conversation today. So um, the first question we have for the community is, how did you get started with your business? Ooh, child. Okay, funny story. So um, my husband, who was also co-owner of Smokey Joe's Barbecue, we decided that we wanted to enter into an amateur rib competition. Um, it was the largest amateur rib competition in Oakland County. And we was just trying to see, you know, my, my husband is a very, he's a foodie, right? And he wanted to kind of dive in and he always like smoking meats and doing all the good things, right? So we entered and we won first place. Um, that was back in 2016. So um, we were literally bum rushed because they like, where's your restaurant? Who are you? Where y'all come from? Da, 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 da. And we were just doing it for fun. And then eventually, you know, we began to like kind of think about it like, hey, we can actually do this. So we started selling dinners, twofold reasons. One, to just see if we can develop our clientele and to also pay off for our wedding so we can go into our marriage debt free. I know that's right. Um, And so we purchased and went live with our first food truck in the summer of 2018. Nice. Wow, that time sure do fly. I know, right? We in season five. I'm like, wait, that's five years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it all started just from a competition. And look at y'all today. I know. And I honestly didn't, I can be honest, I didn't think it would grow into the magnitude that it is now. But I'm grateful because the Lord can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. So um, I keep that in the forefront of my mind that, you know, this can be as big as we would want it to be, honestly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So with that said, I hear the food truck industry is scaling up, especially for Michigan to be a $2.7 billion business industry. So with y'all being in business of over five years, how would you say y'all are doing on that scale from starting from competition to full business owners? Um, honestly, a lot of trial and error. Uh, okay. We, when we first started, we made a lot of mistakes, but they'll, I don't look at them as mistakes. I look at them as learning opportunities, right? To mm-hmm. allow us to be, you know, better. So in season five, we are actually debuting our second truck. Um, with a different concept. Um, so we're definitely excited. I won't tell too much about it because it's we got a thing going on about it, but we do have a second truck that is in the works. So we've evolved to where we have multiple trucks out here in these streets now. So definitely excited about that. That is awesome. So how do you find time? Because for you, this is job number two, right? <laughs> and your husband, is he still working or is he doing multiple jobs and running a business with you? Yep. The latter. Um, people ask us this question all the time. Um, we have come to that fork in the road now where we have to consider one of us, you know, letting go of the nine to five. Um, we just haven't done it yet. I don't know if it's for the fear. I don't know if it's we want to get to a certain point, but it's all in the risk, right? So we have been discussing it. I, I work a full nine to five um, with one of the big fours, and he um, is in emergency management. So we have very critical nine to fives on top of Smokey Joe's. So luckily, 
Smoky Joe's right now, and I use the words right now, is seasonal. So in the summertime, it's a little bit easier to maneuver. Um, work schedules, meetings, and multitasking is a big thing for both of us. Um, and luckily, we have a staff, right, that allows us to not always have to be hands-on, but near. But then we can handle other things as well. Nice. That's awesome. So you said uh, with starting this process with um, growing your businesses, it has been a lot of trial and error. Um, Can you discuss with us the process of the food truck industry, such as different types of food trucks um, or specifically the type that you have, costs and requirements? First things first, the type of truck. We are a barbecue truck, right? So and we are a very what's the word I'm looking for we do like smoked meats it's not more so of like nachos we do those but you know you get smoked brisket you get ribs you get rib tips you get barbecue chicken so that takes time so one of the things that we have to learn early on is logistics um and utilizing a logistic plan to prep for every and every pop-up shop catering job um, whatever we have on the schedule to allow us to be not only efficient, but on time. Um, mm. And not going to lie, we struggle with that very early on being on time, right? Because anything can happen, right? Um, but as far as licenses and stuff, so at first we just was going to have a, a food truck license. I, I can't recall the actual term for it, but it was a license that required um, a commissary. So hmm. commissaries are hip now, right? So they're taxing up the wazoo for mm-hmm. us to utilize their name as a building, right? So what we decided to do is set up a what is called an STFU, which is a standardized transit food unit that allows okay. us to be our own commissary. So we don't have to have a commissary. We made sure that our first truck has everything that is required for the STFU. It's a little bit more Mm -hmm. pricier, but it's consistent and we don't have to worry about commissaries because that's where a lot of the expenses are. Um, And I know I'm jumping around a bit, but because of us being barbecue and since COVID, meat is expensive. So our marginal cost is a little higher, but we do adjust our prices to reflect that without necessarily taxing the people because once you have good food, that's it. Right. But we don't right. want you paying $30, $40 for a plate. And then that plate doesn't equate to that $30, $40. So it, it's very, we're very intricate about looking into our price point and also looking to our marginal costs with operating sp- expenses and not having a commentary really helps that because we don't have a monthly fee of $500 to $1,000 a month. Nice, nice. And that's a major way of cutting additional costs for uh, your overhead. So yeah. that's that's really, really good. Who who knew? <laughs> you know, right? That's awesome. Now, is the cost for trucks, would you say they would fluctuate as far as like being like least expensive to most expensive? Is it better to purchase new versus used? So depends on what your liquid assets look like and your and what you're willing to do. For us, we bought the trucks bare and we built them sweet. So we built them ourselves. Well, let me not say we because I, I want to do it. Um, he built it <laughs> along with assistance um, from different contractors. Um, it was cheaper. I'm not saying it was it was cheap, but it was cheaper than having a truck that was fully suited and fully built to sweep, right? Those trucks can run anywhere to forty to sixty five thousand dollars, right? And mm-hmm. when you build the truck yourself, you cut corners. I mean, during COVID, unfortunately, but fortunately, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of restaurants shut down. So we were working on our second truck, getting different equipment from those from those um, individuals who were closing their restaurants for little next to nothing, right? So wow. 
I mean, even though COVID was is what it is, because I still believe that we're still in it, right? Um, yeah. In the thick of it, we were lucky to get um, just the big equipment. I mean, like stoves and fryers and griddles and for the second chunk. Um, and any upgrades that we needed, we usually do it ourselves. Um, it, or if it's not ourselves, it's a contractor that is going to show us love, essentially. Nice. That's awesome. I'm so proud to hear how far y'all came. And I know, Jillian, but I didn't know that process as far as how y'all got started. I mm -hmm. thought one of the two of you had already had a background in like catering services or food services and just took off from there. Uh-uh. Interesting. Not at all. If you want to count me serving at church from time to time when we have visitors, that's about it. But no experience whatsoever. Wow. So you you would say anybody who has a passion for uh, food trucks can get into this business and get started. Absolutely. Because guess what? If it doesn't work out, which I don't wish that on anybody, you can easily sell the truck. It's very lucrative right now, as opposed to a brick and mortar where you got to go through that process. You've already signed a contract for rental, or if you have a mortgage and you bought it all right, there's so much more overhead in a brick and mortar as opposed to a truck. So you could take the shot and see if it works out, give it a year or two or three. And if it's not lucrative for you, you can sell it. People do it all the time. And that is true. That is true. So um, I do this segment called Tips for Your Business. Okay. And last week I talked about showing up for your business. So can you give a description of what that looks like pertaining to your business? How do you show up for your business? Ooh, child. Okay, so showing up for the business. Um, for me, I have to mentally prepare. I feel mm. as if if you don't have, if your head is not in the game, your day is not going to be successful. It never, ever fails. Um, and one major thing, my co-owner is my husband, right? So there are times where we may not agree on the truck, but we made a promise to one another that business and our marriage should not intertwine. And I think that mm -hmm. it's very important because a lot of times um, when you have a co-owner who's also your, you know, your helpmate, your spouse and what have you, things can get intertwined and muddled with bringing that frustration and issues at home. So if you're not in it by yourself, if you with your significant other or a spouse or what have you, that is the number one key. Then on top of that, being mentally prepared to do the day, because anytime we do a gig, it's an all day process for us. No matter what time it is, no matter how many hours it takes, it is at least four to 12 hours preparation because we smoke meats, we are cooking, mm -hmm. we are, I have my employees come out, clean the truck and pack it, you know. And allow the allow all of that to kind of come into place, and we always get to our destination for our catering gig or our pop up shop an hour before, because it takes us literally maybe forty five minutes to prepare, mm -hmm. and then that last fifteen minutes is the wiggle room, or it gives us time to kind of whoop our get monies together, hype each other up, because some places we be you know hyped, um, and it allows us to kind of just be successful. Nice. Wow, that is a lot. It is. I, I, well, looking at the food trucks, you can tell there's a lot of prep with having to get your truck stocked up, make sure you got gas first and foremost, okay. <laughs> you know, but um, that's a long day. It is a long day. And honestly, we, our season, our season starts next month, but the thick of our season is after Memorial Day. We're okay. Every weekend from Memorial Day all the way down to about October. Like the beginning of October or mid-October? Mid-October is generally our cutoff point because that's when it the weather starts to get finicky. And we, our first original truck 
is actually a trailer. So okay. it's very difficult to drive in the snow. Um, but our second truck is a truck. So I don't know. That might change the game a little bit. We don't know. We Once we get it out there, we'll see what the deal is. Yeah, I think so. That will offer a little bit more flexibility. And um, as far as like truck stops, well, um, postings, because I see different trucks posted up different places, especially like in that high area of living noise. Um, do you, can you park anywhere? How does that work? So recently the city of Detroit has opened or has passed the law, I guess I can call it a law, that uh, food trucks can set up anywhere throughout the city. However, big however, mm -hmm. there are blackout areas that you cannot set up without the proper permission because they're owned. So like downtown where Catfish Marshes is, that's a big no-no. You have to go through downtown street eats. Liver noise is another area. So there's the pockets of high profitable areas that at the end of the day, the people that own it or the people that are over it is just trying to make money off the food trucks. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, downtown street eats. Like I said, it's campus marshes, Beacon Park, that whole area. And I think last year to pay for a panhandler's license was like $550. And then on top of that, we have to pay an event vendor fee. Um, wow, this can range anywhere from like a hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars. So, I'm already out eight hundred dollars at most to get into these areas, and so, and I'm not gonna lie, they're worth it. But yes, if you're up and coming, um, sometimes you can't afford it, and that's okay. Make it a goal, right? Make it a goal to get to those places. Um, we this year have been asked to do. Arts, Beats, and East, we're waitlisted. So that's huge. That's um, major. That's very major. So we're right now thinking logistically on how we can handle that because that is a lot of people and that is a lot of food. Mm. Um, well, hold that then, thought because yeah. I'm going to ask you a question about how do you prepare for a big crowds of people? <laughs> so in um, thinking about your your products as far as like meats and things like that. And I see you have these juicy, what is this? Lamb chops, ribs lamb, behind you. Lamb chops. <laughs> how do you, how can you gaze like how much meat to purchase if you're doing festivals and events and things like that? Food child. Listen, that's where the trial and error comes in. Okay. There have been moments where early on we ran out of food. Um, I mean, catered items where they've already paid us. Mm -hmm. We ran out of food. Um, that was very early on. Um, we done pop-up shops where we ran out of food in an hour and a half. Like, it's all about trial and error. So now we do a lot of things repetitively, right? So I know in my head, if I'm going to go here, I know that I have to prepare A, B, and C. And so now... Right. We have it to where, for instance, my mac and cheese can feed about 50, right? 50 orders, whatever it is, whether it be a load of mac bowl, which is our number one seller, or if it's going in a dinner, um, like our smoked brisket dinner or what have you, I know that pan is going to utilize 50 people. So if I'm expecting 400 orders, I got to make eight pans of that. Wow. But I didn't know that, right, until trial and error. So would you say you all do um, small plate size or is this like full serving sizes? Full serving sizes. Um, wow. Full servings. And that's the one, that's the beauty of our truck, right? Talk about anybody else's truck, but a lot of times, and I'm an advocate for supporting other trucks mm -hmm. because I would want that same support. And we've been to some trucks that are phenomenal, right? Portion wise, price point wise, phenomenal. Um, and I've been to other trucks that would charge me an arm and a leg and the box mm -hmm. is light, right? So it makes you wonder, like, what are y'all thinking about to make sure you want the food to be appealing? So for instance, if we know we got to scale down a little bit when it comes to catering orders, or if they want smaller portions, we're going to buy smaller boxes, right? To make mm -hmm. it more appeasing to the Smart. person. It's, it's, the, it's the same amount of food 
but it doesn't look as empty, right? So you make those little tweaks to make it more attractive because somebody's going to eat with their eyes first before they do anything else. Another thing is, I am a proponent of presentation because mm-hmm. social media is real. So I make sure my employees, my staff, we take a little longer because we're not considered fast food on this truck. Mm-hmm. But I need them to make sure that they're laying the meat and just, just throwing it in the box. Because mm-hmm. we've had instances where people are like, the food is good, but it's ugly. You know what I'm saying? Or they posted it. I don't. Don't post my uh, don't post ugly food for Smoky Joe's. I don't want ugly food on Smoky Joe's. So those are things that we take a little longer, but in that token, presentation is everything. So since we are on the topic of presentation and taste, what's on the menu? We do everything. <laughs> um, we do anything for smoked brisket, pulled pork, ribs, rib tips, barbecue chicken, jerk chicken. It's very um, popular. As far as sides, we do anywhere from mac and cheese, green beans, and we also do a vegan green bean. Shout out for that. Okay. Um, we do baked beans, vegetarian baked beans, honey jalapeno cornbread, yellow rice. We mm. do it all. Nice. Now, do you also sell beverages? A lot of times, if we're at like a pop-up shop that is downtown or somewhere that's a festival, they don't want us to take away from someone who has a beverage truck. So they will put that stipulation in the co- contract, like no beverages. Um, but if that stipulation isn't there, we then sell beverages. So like just can pop or water, nothing too fancy. Okay. So at this time, I ask people to plug in a business, um, let the community know how can they find you, support your business, book, <laughs> uh, catering events, um, follow you? Uh, um, Smokey Joe BBQ 313.com is our website. Uh, okay. Facebook, Smokey Joe BBQ 313. And so is Instagram and TikTok. Um, our email address, Smokey Joe BBQ 313 at gmail.com. So, as long as you got that little blurb of Smokey Joe with the EY, BBQ313, you can find us everywhere. We're also available as a Google search as well. Awesome. Thank you. We will be sure to include all of the details in the show notes so they know where to find you, how to book, and also visit the website. Any tips you want to share or any motivational <laughs> Or anything aspirational you want to share with people getting started in a food truck business? For sure. Um, Don't give up. Those first, you will have good days. You have bad days. We've had bad days. And it Mm. was not to jump in in specific areas, but racism is real. And there were some instances that um, there was a particular neighborhood that couldn't believe that we were the owners, so they refused to buy from us. Um, real big damper, right? But we never give up. No matter how tired we are juggling all the things that we have, because we got a lot going on in this Wilson household, um, we don't give up. So my tip is give it a year. Give it two years to see where you are. Work on your business plan. Work on defining what your niche is in your food truck. Everybody got to eat. Right. So if if you if you're a food truck and you have like a niche, you will be nothing but successful. But it takes time. And I think sometimes we get a little impatient because we want it to just flourish, you know, immediately. Point number two. Get licensed. There are a lot of food trucks out here who are riding dirty, whatever but still have lucrative incomes, right, from that food truck. But if you really want to expand your footprint, there are different festivals that require us to show not only your insurance, but your license from the state. And if you can't supply that, you will never get to that to get to those venues. So make sure you eventually get licensed to open up your food print. Number one rule. Hmm. Very important major key. A lot of people be out here just trying to do the thing and thinking that 
They can be out here doing whatever they want to do or they feel, oh, just because my brand looks good or my marketing is good or we making bread over here, they can just do anything. So thank you for sharing those tips. Very, very important. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Jillian Wilson from Smokey Joe's Barbecue. Yes. It has been truly a pleasure um, having you today. For all the listeners, thank you for joining in in the conversations today. Please subscribe to the podcast. It is available on all podcast platforms. And we will see y'all on the next one. Thank you so much. I appreciate you.